Good evening and welcome back to the shop. We are going to talk about design. One of my favorite topics. I love the possibility thinking of design. There's a kind of um, optimism and hopefulness at the root of design and true creativity. It's like you're, you're believing in this thing that's not yet. And so you have this hopeful, positive, optimistic, what can go wrong attitude. And that's what I hope you start to instill in your own work. I wanna share that with you. And I feel the mutual inspiration when I see your photographs you're sending me of things you're making. I am always looking for new ideas. I'm always drinking in new design ideas on Instagram and with my fellow uh, furniture masters. And you know, I still go back to the well of the 18th century frequently. So uh, Mark, thank you for sending me that book. A <laughs> uh, uh, friend of mine sent me a link, some of you may have seen it, where you can have access to the towns of the John Townsend book that was published by the Metropolitan Museum of Art when they had a, an exhibit of John Townsend's work. He was probably the pinnacle maker of Newport furniture back in the late 18th century. And just, I mean, I just start reading that book and I get all caught up and I'm back into it again. I'm like, oh no. I'm like, I, it's just phenomenal work, inspiring in so many ways. Well, my first inspiration for even woodworking and woodworking at a high level came from my first shop teacher. I actually went to a vocational school for a couple of years before I started feeling like I was uh, falling behind academically and switched back over to uh, regular high school and then went to college and that whole route. But when I was 13, I went to a vocational school and for two years I was in the carpentry program and we were doing a lot of what I'm showing you like hand planing and chopping, it was crazy. And this was my first shop teacher, Mr. Lavoie. So I'm kind of dressed in his honor tonight. Uh, this is how he dressed. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't long ago that Men who worked in shops wore a tie and a, and a shirt with their apron on, and then he's got his pens and pencils. And that's me, actually, working right there. I, I think I have glasses on in that picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, that's, that's Bob Soucy, and that's Mark Lamond. It's <laughs> weird how you still remember those guys. And we each we had a, a spot at the bench, that was my advice. And uh, Miss Lavoie sat back there. And so he was just a quiet, he was like Bill Belichick of the, uh, <laughs> we were all so like afraid of him, but he wasn't a big man. They in fact nicknamed him meanly Mousy. Uh, but I, we all were very quiet and respectful because <laughs> there was something about his demeanor that commanded respect. And he taught us the fundamentals of sharpening and hand planing and I mean it was crazy I was learning that back when I was so I'm 14 in this photo so anyway hats off to Miss Lavoie <laughs> if anyone is back in Lowell Massachusetts and knows what happened to Miss Lavoie or his family you know obviously he's not around anymore but um any, any connection to his family I think his first hear. name was Raymond huh that would be fun to hear. Yeah. I would like to, yeah, I don't know that anybody would have that connection. Let's get to it. We're going to <laughs> uh, start to dream up a piece of furniture. And I shared with you last time I was here uh, that I was going to be designing a round table, uh, kind of like a center table, a pedestal table. So by that I mean, um, Often we think of rails running around the outer edge of a table with legs coming down from the rails. Uh, those are perimeter type legs into a rail system and the top sets on. If you have that center column into legs or some kind of center support, we're talking more of a pedestal table. So it's sitting on a pedestal versus exterior legs. I always prefer the pedestal tables if you can have one because they're so much easier to sit around. We all know the 
annoyance of banging into a leg on the perimeter. And this way we can kind of hang out. Yes, the, the negative is that your feet can hit the column underneath, but if it's a large enough table, that's rarely an issue. And I want to make this almost four feet in diameter. So it's going to be pretty nice size. I don't think the feet will be a problem. I'm going to bring this model in. This was from uh, one of the episodes on the PBS show, Rough Cut, where I designed this craftsman style table. And I had never done much craftsman style before this. But it was kind of, I mean, compared to the 18th century stuff, if you're familiar with that, this is very basic. <laughs> and, but it was fun to work in this, in this style because it's linear, it's honest, but it, I wanted it to have some nice balance and character. So I drew it up and then I made a model, a scale model, so that I could see it to see how the weight of the base appeared. Did it look too chunky? Did it look too light? Was it nicely uh, balanced for the width of the top? But then I also wanted to know how far to set it back from that meeting edge so it looked pleasing under the overall length. And this one also has two leaves, so it also had to extend like that. And I even had the rail system and everything where you could drop a couple leaves in. And then to you guys, I featured some other pieces like this craftsman style coffee table. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was similar. Um, that was a fun little design. We played around with two different models and it's all just hot glued together. When you zoom in on it, it's almost hard to tell whether you're looking at a full size piece or not. So as you might see in the picture that we promoted tonight with, I have a pen in the picture so you can tell that the object is not full size. And then this was a little model I made of a uh, waterfall coffee table for the classic woodworking show. <laughs> and uh, this is in Walnut and I was just playing around with the legs, sort of Nakashima-like, but I don't know. It, I'm not sure that leg worked visually, but you know what? I had to get another episode out fast, so that's what you got. <laughs> now, I don't like to rush designs. I like them to percolate. I like to mull it over, you know? And you, you're sketching, you come back, you sketch a little more. So that's kind of what happened. This was just thinking about various designs for trestle tables. Look at these things are not fancy. They're kind of scribbles, but I'm trying to see if things jump out at me in relation to the lines of the column comb combined with the shapes of the bases. So you might recognize this base over here. This is very shaker-like, you know? So the shakers had uh, trestle tables that had that rounded shape. And then there's a flatter, and I was experimenting with uh, a leg that had just a gentle kind of slope up and a light relief at the bottom. And I was kind of liking that idea for my center pedestal table. Then, of course, I tried some different curvy linear. This one seems too much. I actually kind of like the interplay of the straight line on the column with curvature on the legs. Because if you make everything curvy, it can sometimes fail because there's no point of reference. It just looks like jelly, sort of. You know, like you need. You need some place for your eye to rest in a way, you know, so it's straight lines aren't awful and the top of the table is straight. So then I was sketching some little more. This was thinking about my table now. And then I, at some point I moved to this piece of paper and started sketching out different ideas for the column that I wanted all to connect like in this four side. I decided I wanted four legs. So here I was just working on kind of how I wanted that column to appear. And this had like a little terraced action on the top of the leg. I don't know, that didn't work for what I'm thinking here. I wanted more simple and what whatnot. In the future, I'm going to do a higher style veneer one, but this one, I wanted to have more solid kind of integrity. This 
was my last time I was sketching, sitting on the couch, thinking about, you know, watching the game or whatever, and, and just r sketching out various pieces. And this started to come to the, the surface, like this linear kind of pyramiding base, and then the, the, the actual rail for the foot to have that kind of curvature, and then a nice little relief at the bottom for the feet. And so that's the direction I decided to go in. And I tried to draw it into some scale right here. This was just freehanding thinking, okay, if the top is that wide, the base should be about like that wide. And then I measured this and started to bring it into a scale. So my scale, I knew I wanted my top to be a 46 inch diameter round. So I just, used the measurement here and proportionally figured out how many inches this base would be if this were 46. And anyway, it just helped me to start to translate this onto a uh, scale. Now this, this little drawing right here was looking down on the base and I was starting to think about a little more detail. So you have where those base pieces come together on the floor, the joinery for the center. Should I make these miters and have them all come in at a miter? And I was really leaning toward that for a while, but I think I'm getting away from that and I'll tell you in, in a minute why. And then the uprights, rather than being flat like the previous one I showed you, like this one, stay right there. Rather than just being flat, looking almost like two by sixes, right? Uh, I wanted to put a little more modern contemporary feeling to this table so it doesn't just feel like it's a it's trying to be all craftsman but it can have a little contemporary flair so I'm going to slightly radius again maybe that pillowing effect on those uprights and keep that angle and then figure out what I'm gonna do with the feet all right so I had all that and now it was time to put it down to... Uh, can, can I ask you a question that's come sure. up here? Yeah. How do you know, Ron's curious, and others as well, how do you know when you've reached that point um, that it's good? <laughs> <laughs> ah, this, this is really in, inside of you. I, don't, I can't answer that. You have to... It's like an intuitive process. And... You're, you're kind of living in the world of make-believe, in a way. <laughs> and so, as we enter the world of make-believe, oh, no. and we're going to I advance... I folks. <laughs> what? We're going to advance this. Uh, now we're going to start making our model. And I've got, I'm feeling a little chill, so <laughs> I want to put on my sweater. And... Oh, my goodness. Dude, <laughs> I'm not going to sing the song, but I don't know. It just gets, puts me in the mood for imagining things. I don't know. You have to come to that place where you say, that's good. But don't worry, because you're not at the end yet. This can always be changed and re as you resolve it, as you move through. So when I build a model, that's the model is a is a kind of resolution tool. It's your, you have your initial idea and it looks good on paper. Then, you, then I move it into the scale drawing. And then from the scale drawing, we can produce a model which will help you look and make changes then. What I did here, I'm not gonna draw this now, but I, this was, I actually made this to 330 second scale, meaning each 332nd is equal to one inch. So that's how this is. Now, normally I'm drawing at about a, a one eighth inch scale. And that's what those models all are. They're one eighth of an inch equals an inch on the piece. So you can see, let me see if I can point out some of these things. Here's the, the dimensions. Here's my columns. And I was working on that. I wanted that to be tighter and narrower and look leaner and cleaner than the uh, craftsman table I showed you a minute ago 
the large table. And I also, rather than just a straight line here, I'm gonna give it that nice little curve so that I just like how that looks. I've seen it on other trestle tables. I like how that resolves to the floor. It looks kind of elegant. And then I'm going to give it a soft radius as well. Now, over on this one, on this one on the right, I started to draw in the little relief under here. So I was going to cut a nice little relief all the way across, just about a half inch off the floor, a quarter to a half inch, so that just your feet are hitting the four feet. And then these columns would come in and that's the way it looked. So then looking on the top view, you can see I'm showing the columns and I'm now I'm showing, here's how I want to shape those columns, where they're going to hit. Here's where the swale begins to the foot. And this shows how wide the feet are for the diameter. And that feels about right. Um, this varies, you know, all the great examples vary. They didn't have it exactly the same, but I've seen tables where I thought it was too large and too small. And that's more of a perspective thing. Um, I don't know the exact rule for that either, but I have compared like great pieces, uh, traditional pieces in history and liked it. Now I had it at 332nd, but I wanted to make a model so I could further resolve this and have it be an eighth inch scale. So I redrew what I liked the most. Oh, I didn't mention here, these little squares, that was considering making uh, piercing holes through the bottom there. I don't know why, but that location felt like it might work. And it also is about an inch square, three inches up from the bottom. I don't know that I'm gonna do that. That's uh, very craftsman and it's kind of a thick leg. I kind of am thinking to not do it, but then we have here, this is the eighth inch scale model. I was showing you on this one how I had that lighter base there. And while I was thinking about this design, I was thinking about that, that connection in the middle being something like this. Maybe not exactly that detail, but I like this. This was imaginative joinery in my mind that Tim Coleman made on a table. Um, he's a friend of mine. He's also in the New Hampshire Furniture Masters, but he's a really, I love his designs. They're thoughtful. So there's the dining table. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it's got a nice little arched uh, base here. And that's where that joinery is that's on the front cover right in that center. And then he's got his feet landing in here. And it's just an elegant light, but it has an appearance of strength. But those curved lines really give it a, like a lift and lightness, but strong all the, all the same. This is kind of an interesting base, isn't it? Because it's, it's a mix between a pedestal and a perimeter leg table. The legs are set under enough that it's more like a pedestal but they're not so far that they're in the center. So it's pretty interesting mixture, but it works beautifully. You know, I know he mulls this stuff over and over, but I, you know, when I was, after reflecting on this, I went to this book to see this joint and then I started to see that lift and I thought, huh, maybe a little lift, a little more under the base of mine will lighten it up and give it an interesting, dimensions. So that's what I did over here. So check this out. I went from this, just a straight line here, to wanting to add lift. So I still got my swale, and then here I am over here. So I got my swale, but look, I raised this, I made a curve line, and now I'm coming over about an inch off the floor. It doesn't look like much, but that little bit gives it a more formal appearance. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. See the difference? So I just love that. It brings it up off the floor, but it actually didn't change the height at all of these lower pieces. It just lightened up the meat on the bottom. And if you look at this, this always looked a little chunky to me as well. See that? See how chunky that looks? It's on the floor. Mm -hmm. It's a chunkier base, but that's kind of the craftsman style and it worked for this big table. But for this table, I wanted to have 
an appearance of strength and also elegance. And there you go. So we've got a little more contemporary flair to this that pushes it away from craftsman style just by doing this. You know, it's, it's different. All right, so I had that all set. Now it was time to make the model. I just measure these parts and make the pieces exactly this size. So you're just measuring and you're making parts. So here I go, I've got, this is my base stock. This is the equivalent of three and a half inches high. So it's three eighths, what did I say? Three and a half inches, yeah. So it would be three eighths plus a sixteenth. So it's seven sixteenths high to give you three and a half inches. And then the thickness is I think two and three quarters. So look, I'm, go I'm gonna use a, a lap joint. I decided because you barely see the joint inside those legs and it's a much easier joint to execute. And it's not necessary to go to those lengths for the other one and we could have the table built more directly. I'll just show you my little attempt at making the model pieces. I'm just gonna show you a few of the styles here. So once you have your drawing like this, I made a little template of the upright. So this is just made the exact size as one of the uprights. And the base, I did the same, I just made a shape that's exact like the base, okay? Just one side and I could flip it around. So then when I take my base pieces, I could hold this right in position. And where's my pencil? And this is, it's kind of fun because you can make a piece of furniture, miniature, yes, but you can make it quite quickly by just cutting pieces like this. And then, let me make sure I got enough darkness here. And I would do that on all four sides. And then with my uprights, I would bring this in and get it nice and flush. And then... Lupe's curious if you do a model for every piece. No, I don't, Lupe. I, um, if I feel really pretty sure about it, if it's rectangular, it's like a fairly simple, like let's say it was a blanket chest. There's no need really for model there. It's usually, it's something new that I'm concerned about the relationships, um, the weight appearance of things in three dimension. Now, I know a lot of people like SketchUp and God bless you. <laughs> I could never learn to do that, like the kind of curves I wanted to add to work in SketchUp. And it can, you can turn the object around virtually and look at it in three dimension, but I don't know, I just find a model, it's almost like, it's just a real thing in your hand. You know, you really can have it and it's look at it. It's yeah. It just feels more tangible. So, cause it is, but it's, um, so I'll only do it when I really need to see it. A lot of times chairs are helpful. Those kind of three dimensional pieces that look like you need to see them. I, I love to make models of that. All right, so let's just go over to the bandsaw for a second. I'll just make a couple quick cuts on these pieces and show you how I proceeded with this design. All right, here we go. So once I have that, I can take my little pieces and, you know, I've got bandsaw marks there. And this is where your little block plane can clean them up really fast. And this guy I have 
curved part. So this I could use something like, you know, you just think creatively, like I've got this. I don't even have to put this, like if I put this in the drill bit, I would sand through that so fast. So I'll just do it by hand, use the curvature to quickly smooth up that soft transition. And then I would do maybe under there with a little file. And then I could come in here and actually treat it almost like it was full size and make a little center line. Now this is what we'll be doing in the final analysis. And what I'm gonna do is not leave this dead straight. I'm gonna taper it just some a subtle amount. And those little tapers add a lot of beauty, I feel, and refinement to it. They're almost indistinguishable, but I'll be taking off a good quarter of an inch, I believe, each side. Sorry, we lost you for a second there, but I'm just tapering this leg. We just about got that tapered. And then I would just radius. I actually take a file and I would radius that just softly as I imagine to try to create, you know, I just take a little file. I don't even think I have it here, but, um, and one by one, knock those feet out. And before you know it, I'd have all three or four done and then press it together and I'd have my base set. Then the uprights, I wanted to pillow those a little. So I would just, you know, try to simulate that by taking off some on each side here. And I could make some guidelines on this as well to the dimension that I wanted to bring it down to. But go ahead and get all four sides and then I could take some sandpaper. You know, this is not, <laughs> this is not fine woodworking. It's, this is kind of resourceful ways of shaping very small parts. It's really kind of gratifying when you know the effort that it takes for the full size. But pretty rapidly, I could get a soft kind of pillowing on that side. And then on the outer surface, I'm also gonna slightly radius that so it's not a flat edge. So I just come in here and do that. Now I spent a little more time, obviously, on all four of them. But once I had them all set, the cool thing is you come in here and I'm using that line as the point of attachment. I'm gonna have the gap between each side the same as the width here. So all I needed to do was have a glue gun. I just put a little glue right on the bottom of this. And I wondered how much time I had with the glue before it started hardening. <laughs> so I counted and I did some tests with scrap and they have about 20 seconds. So that's a long time. We'll just be very calm here. And then I'm gonna just kind of rub it in there, line it up, generally center it, and put good pressure until I get over 20 seconds. <laughs> and then I can let it go. And there, we have a nice joint. <laughs> so that's the way I would glue those on. And I did that after all, everything was shaped. And then I made a little cross piece for the under support as well. And I'm gonna show you that now. Let's check out my model. So there you have it. So I've got, if you see those feet, they're softly radius. There's a gentle taper. And then it has that raised detail. See how it's up off the floor a little more? It has a kind of refinement that's not typical of craftsman style, but it pushes it a little more to the contemporary. Now, sometimes working at this scale is a little tedious and too small. So you could actually do this as a quarter inch scale. So every quarter inch is a one inch and that would double the size of this actually because this is eighth inch size. So I would have a table, you know, that high, you know, by the end of it. Can you describe the difference if there is one or the, between pillowing and rounding over? Are those the same thing? Well, they can be. I'm not sure what you mean by rounding over. Usually when you say rounding over, you're talking about rounding over a corner. Um, Pillowing is like a subtle kind of softening of a surface. It's a radius thing, but it's much larger radius, all right, than your typical round over. You might put a quarter inch round over on the edge of a table or a, quarter, or a half inch round over. That's how we usually think of round overs. 
But when I say pillowing, I'm talking about a larger plane of shape, okay? So these, these tops of these legs are pillowed, not a lot side to side, but enough that it gives another dimension to that leg. So you have the taper, you have the pillowing, and even the ends are gonna have a slight, I don't know, can you pick that up? See if I up? can highlight that, yeah. You see it? I mean, I, it's not perfect on these, obviously, but it's represented for sure. And then you can see on these uprights, can, are you picking that up? The softening I did, mm -hmm. the shaping right. of those? Yeah. It's not perfect, but it gave me a simulation so I could look at it and see. All right, so once I had that, I felt, I feel good about that. I like the size. Now we came to the top. How do I want the top to be configured? Do I need an apron around the top? How thick do I want the top? Will the dimension of 46 inch diameter be, look appropriate to the base? Will it look supportive? So I made, some top material now i just use this is by the way this is some piece of mahogany i had small pieces and i was able to get out some parts this is some mahogany veneer i believe it was um uh, african mahogany that i got from certainly wood some time ago one sixteenth inch thickness that works great for making models because i know that one sixteenth of an inch is equates to a, core, uh, a half an inch of this scale. So I use this and I just glue it up to thickness. Four layers will look like two inches at the scale. So here's, here I made a two, this is a two layer top and I attached an apron that is about two inches, is represented by four layers so it's two inches thick. So overall, this thing is three inches, but you can see it's got, you've seen those kind of oak tables with that kind of apron, and I just glued that on. I made a little center point so I can kind of get it lined up pretty true. All right, so let's get it on the floor. There we have that view. Here's how I drew it with the legs side. I actually like the relationship of the legs. What bothers me a little bit about it is the apron, I just felt like it looked a little thick, you know, a little too thick there. So then I have this top, this is a double layer thickness, and this represents like one inch thickness with no, no outside apron. So let's put that on there. And now we have no apron, but we've got a lighter top. I actually like that a little more, but it's still, it looks a little thin now to me. So I'm thinking of making, I actually glued up, this is how I glue up the layers. I just put it between a couple blocks. Uh, just quickly swipe some glue and just put some clamps on these blocks. And now I have three layers here. So I'm going to cut this into a round. That will be the equivalent of an inch and a half top. I actually think something close to an inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter might work. Cause this, this might have to be, I don't usually use tops that thick, but I think I'd rather like to avoid that apron. Maybe add it, but um, this, this is square obviously, but it's gonna give you some idea of the, so you could make it a square table too. I don't know, that thickness, I haven't looked at it yet. That's a little thick to me. So I think we'll go, we'll probably be, this is an inch and a half anyway. So I'll sand this down to about an inch and a quarter representation and see if I like it more than this. So we'll, we'll actually saw it around. I'll just use, the nice thing is, you just use the elements that you have. So the very compass that I use to draw this circle, I just set it right to that radius. And then I can set it in here and just draw that top. And then I'm just gonna saw that out on the bandsaw. 
But then I like to see what it's going to look like with finish on it. So I like to get a little brush. <laughs> Actually, I usually spray these things, but I thought it'd be fun to brush it. And this is mahogany with shellac, just a little orange shellac here. Losing my glue bone we don't, there. We don't tend to think, or maybe this isn't a thought that you would have, per se, not, not dissing you, but Al Evan was saying that Michelle would probably encourage him to make the uh, pedestal portion more separated so that it's easier to clean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a little wider. I think that's about... What is that? That's a good inch and a half gap. Yeah, if you make it more separated though, then yeah, you're gonna have a wider appearance. I just wanted that kind of tighter together look at the bottom, but I told, I thought about that too. When I got this together, I was like, huh, how close do you wanna go? And some of my earlier drawings were actually showing it fused together as one. So you could even put a block and have it have a center column. But I kind of like the, the light in there coming through, um, having it separated. But I totally understand the concern there. <laughs> How do you keep it clean? How would you model a sliding dovetail? <laughs> so I would oh, keep going, funny. you know, with uh, do the whole top and all that. But uh, that's pretty good now. Um. Yeah, are you gonna, how are you gonna make the apron, Tom, if you go that direction, will you gonna laminate? That'll be, yeah, it'll be laminated around a form. I'm gonna show that in the course, regardless whether you wanna put an apron or not. So you'll have that option, and I'll actually have that option on the drawing. I like to show now drawings with several options if you decide you'd rather go, you know, add a feature, that is or isn't there. Whoops, I just lost one of my uprights. All right, we'll just look at it from over here. <laughs> All right, so let's check it out with a top now. Look at that, that looks, that's actually how the finish would appear. Let's get a little on this top. Is there anything you would say at this point about your considerations of structure and design, how you meant Yeah, I do like those? to see that. These are gonna be, um, mortise and tenon into the base, the ones at the top are going to be through and wedged because you know you don't have as much expanse there. The one thing I'm contemplating is putting those legs into a block with two longer cleats or keeping this method, I don't usually use this method, but I thought, you know, it mirrors the base, it could work. And I might make these a little longer. Um, you'd have to have the screws slotted to allow for some movement. But I'm always thinking about the extreme case, like if someone jumped up or sat on the edge of this table, you know, and then I'm, would it, would it be able to handle that? And I do think it will once I um, get those tenons in at the top, they'll be through and wedged. And there's kind of like a, a helping support of all those joints in combination you know you're gonna have three i'm sorry four heavy like half inch tenons going through all right so let's get a check out of Will the table have leaves tom well that oh that's a good question because initially i thought i would make this table with leaves there again i may present the option but i don't think i'm making mine with leaves because um you want, when you have a single pedestal like this, you don't really have that much opportunity. You can't go too large. I would only go about 20 inches, say, with a leaf, a leaf so that if it comes apart, let me get this set again. Uh-oh, I'm losing the whole base. Oh, well, there it goes. <laughs> I think the alcohol had an effect on the, but there you go. The glue. <laughs> <laughs> this model will, be reattached and I will use it as the jumping off point. If you use the extension support, what I don't like about this is um, if you buy the pre-made extensions, they have like a geared wheels so that when you pull it open, the pedestal stays centered, which is what you want with a single pedestal like this. You want the leaves to come out only so far to accept the leaf, I mean, the center leaf. 
if you had this thing extend to put in like four feet of leaves, then you're really cantilevered out and it's too tipsy over that singular base. So I would only have this open enough to add one 20 inch leaf, say, or two, you know, 10 to 12 tops, right? And that mechanism, though that rail system extensions for support, those are just attached to the block on the top. So that center rail of those extensions is fixed on the block. So your whole support for this table is simply that rail mechanism that you buy is attached to the base and then it's attached to the top. I don't really like that setup. I mean, uh, there's other ideas I have, that, but I think that's the easiest thing to do, to buy that. I know you've probably sat at some of those tables and they feel a little creaky, a little shaky, those old oak ones that were like this. They'd have that big chunk and heavy base that were, you know, early manufactured, 1900s. Those had always had that shakiness because that's what it was. The tops attached to the extension mechanism and the extension center rail mechanism is attached to the block at the top of the column. And that, so it's just the, those fasteners and what you're getting there. I don't like that as much. I, I like the honesty and integrity of this, like right to the top, but I'm excited about this. I will have more resolution, but there you have it. Mm -hmm. The imaginative process of taking just an idea and having that kind of optimism and just start working it out. And it just keeps getting refined and refined. And the more furniture you make, the more in your well to draw upon. And the more you look at great pieces in history, the more you have to reflect on and feel confident in your choices. But you're still never sure. So this is a kind of a feel your way along, kind of step by step, getting more information together. You can make clay models or whatever. You can use all different kinds of materials for models. I used real wood here because I wanted to put the finish on and I just like the appearance and having them later. Um, but note to self, do not put denatured alcohol on hot glue because that will actually make it come apart. <laughs> I never knew that, but now we know. Thank you all yes. so much for being part of our silliness. And uh, yes. on behalf of the camera lady and myself, look forward to seeing you next time.